Hey YouTube, Zero Magnum X here. Uh, welcome. This is one of the decks that were featured in the previous games that you saw. Uh, this is the deck I was piloting. It's a like a plateau ambush control. So without further ado, I'm gonna go over the main deck. Uh, it is uh, water, nature, and fire colors. So we have first up uh, the main card of the deck, Plato. Um, He's 3 mana, and when he enters the battlefield, you can choose an ambush from your hand and set it down without paying its cost. So you just get to play a free ambush. Uh, he's kind of what the deck's built around, uh, because you'll see soon that we have a bunch of ambushes, so we run definitely 4 of him. His drag cross allows you to like take an ambush and add it to your hand, um, so you can manipulate where you place them and other things if you'd ever need to, but I don't think that'll come up as often for what he's uh, used for. And then we have uh, 4... Uh, Fleet Wing Sprite, they allow you to take a card from your hand and place it into your resource zone. So it uh, kind of doubles as the first turn play like Plato does is the ideal for it. Uh, you play it, then you get to set an ambush kind of thing. Or if you're lucky enough to uh, have two of them in hand, maybe you ramp up so then that way you can play a Fafnir on as early as turn two. Uh, either or. So that's kind of what this is for. Okay, and then some of the ambushes that we do play, we play four Kingslayer B. Uh, this card's really good. Whenever four it's attacked, you get to summon it, and then you choose an opposing creature and rest it. So very good. Uh, just kind of nerfs an attack and gives you a blocker. Uh, then we two run, we're only running two Power Blasts because we only have one red die to reference. Uh, so if they kill the red die, this card's kind of pointless uh, because there aren't too many great ambushes right now in these colors besides uh, the Thunder Strike or whatever it is that allow you to restand cards out of Fort. We're running Pyroblast for now. Uh, hopefully the next set gives us something to improve upon the strategy with. Okay, we run 4 EMP. Uh, this card, when your Fort is attacked, you may activate it and then choose all creatures at an opposing Fort and rest it. Very, very good card. Uh, reminiscent of Storm Spark Blast in Kaijudo, Holy Awe in... Uh, Dole Masters, very powerful card, very powerful effect. Doesn't target. Okay, and then we have um, four of uh, Ravian, Battlefield Shrieker. Uh, this card's great. Whatever one of your creatures would be destroyed. Uh, if this card's an ambush, has to be on your opponent's turn, though. Um, you can summon it. And then deal two damage to all opposing creatures. So not terrible. Like if they're like, oh well, you have your zero in there, and I'm gonna hard cast my gluttony of Albert, and I did have like a bunch of small creatures on the battlefield. This can come out and just like wreck their board uh, for plays like that. Or if you, you just like simple attack and then you block, and they're like, oh okay, and then you summon this. It's like, no, not only did you replace a card that was blocking, you also dealt a significant amount of damage to their board. So very powerful. That's kind of the control ambush -y, uh, package. And now we run four red fanes. I We only have a set of these. I need to get more. Uh, they're kind of sold out everywhere. <laughs> so I'm trying. Uh, basically, red fane, whenever you attack and destroy a Drago shield, if you have six or less resources, you can take the top card of your deck and put it face down, or put it as a resource on your board. So uh, early ramp, you know, play this turn one, break one of their Drago shields that was low enough, and then just like get a resource, so put you ahead. Very good card, four of them. Um, then we run only two of this guy, uh, Storm Branch, Knowledge of Ages. He allows you to have some resource manipulation. Uh, if you have like, you'll see why he's in here. If we have like an Azarko or a Zero, which are only ran like two and two of, um, you can get them back with him and play them later on to maybe start like, moving to a winning strategy and start winning against your opponent. And even if there's like a card you would like immediately and you have enough colors on the board, because we do play a few cheap creatures, uh, he can come in handy. That's why he's only a two of, because his ability doesn't always come into play, but when it does, it's very helpful. We were on four Hidden Blades, uh, just a Shield Blast creature, uh, or I'm sorry, a uh, Fort Blast creature. You just summon it, and it's a 4-1. It can trade with most, thing, most things, and if it is like their last attack, you just have a free creature. So not much else to say, very good card. All right, and then we have a 3 Expedition Merfolk. This is one of the cards I'd like to bump up to 4. It's really, really good. Uh, it's a 1-mana 0-1. Uh, but whenever it would die, okay, you choose an opposing creature and rest it. And then if it's Drago crossed, uh, it goes to your resource zone. So it's just like, okay, 
tap your guy and I get an extra resource. So it kind of builds um, toward the strategy of what you're trying to accomplish with this deck, which is playing like the next few cards, which are more of your bombs. So we have three Hydra. Um, it's effectively a double uh, double raker. It can deal damage to forts, but you can also split it um, to your proxy because again, I need, I'm getting one and then I need to acquire another one. I'm not sure if I want to run three or four in this deck yet. Three seem to be a good number in the games, but that was testing versus a deck that I feel is off balanced, but we won't get into that in this discussion. Uh, so anyway, when a Shrager crossed, you can choose all of your dice and increase their value by two, which is very good. And then uh, whenever this attacks and isn't blocked by a Drago shield, at the end of the battle, you can restand it and it's a once per turn effect. So you can be like, break your shield or break your barrier. Okay, you only have one barrier in that. Restand, you don't have a Drago shield in the other thing or attack with this guy over here, break your Drago shield. And then this guy can attack and break like a uh, fort barrier. So pretty good, really good card. Um, probably, I mean, both Blue's Double Rose are very good. Uh, this is Zero. Uh, <laughs> if you couldn't tell, I like him a lot. Uh, he's a very good card. He's only two of in this strategy because I don't want him to be clunky, but I want him to be there right when I need him to be. Uh, it can't be blocked by creatures, which is very good. Uh, whenever it, it cannot be chosen by opposing spells or abilities. So if anybody plays Magic, it has Hex Proof. And then when Stregger Crossed, if it deals damage to a fort, you may choose... Oh, okay. So I misread that. He actually has to deal damage to a fort. Um, you can choose an opposing creature and return to the hand. So that's going to be a difference in the games. Um, I thought it was a pawn attack. So my mistake, uh, that would have changed a few things. But I, he couldn't be blocked anyway, so I don't think it mattered. Uh -huh. Effectively, I think it would have ended up in the same results. We only run two Fafnir. Uh, this card's great, but a little less powerful in this kind of deck. Um, you're, you are trying to kill things and do stuff, but hopefully this is like your turn two or turn three play, and then you play like more wide of a strategy, like you try to find a zero, you try to find a Hydra, plus like something else, and kind of go from there. Uh, so good card uh, in a lot of decks. But maybe not so much in this one, which isn't a dedicated ramp strategy because they're trying to do something with uh, pl Plato's and what have you. All right, and then two Azarkos, um, just so when, when we do get to that seven mana, uh, we can play this and kill small creatures. Uh, if we do have like our ramp hand and we're on the draw, this card can come out as early as turn two because Red Fane attacks gets us a resource. Or I'm sorry, and if they. Uh, no, no, it, maybe it's only turn three. Either way, uh, it helps us catch back up, is the point. I'm not trying to think it through while I'm doing a deck profile. Okay, uh, two all guns blazing. Uh, fine card, but not so great, because it's just uh, all creatures that an opposing fort and rest them. But whenever it's a shield blast, uh, you put in, or sorry, fort burst, you uh, rest a creature and draw a card. So it's okay. Uh, if it had the first line of text... As a Fort Burst, I'd be running four of it if they just had made it the Shield Blast, or sorry, Fort Burst version of EMP. It'd be much better, but it's not. And then finally, we round off the deck with four Rejuvenate. Uh, Rejuvenate allows us to, for each of our destroyed, or each of our forts with one or less barriers, we can draw a card. And then reference of one to three green die. Uh, put the top card of your deck into your resource zone. So it can ramp you against early strategies, like early aggressive strategies, and allow you to draw some cards. All right, and quickly we will move to the sideboard. Uh, this is just kind of a mishmash of cards right now uh, to play along with the deck strategies. I don't know if it's correct or not yet, but it's just cards that I thought would play well with what the deck's trying to do. So we have four Nature's Touch. Uh... This says whenever a card at the fort would be destroyed, you can just resummon it. So, like, if they ki somehow killed your zero, you can just bring it back. It has to be on an opponent's turn. So, again, like, if they uh, gluttony of Albert, you can just be like, oh, zero's back, you whistle your gluttony, ha, ha, ha. Or if they uh, get over a smaller creature and kill it, that's cool. Or if they just, like, kill uh, your Azarko, which is one of the big plays, and it's Dragor Cross, so wipes the board, and then you get to resummon it. And then, like, do things again. Uh, so it can be a pretty nasty spell in the right spots. Alright, and then we have 
Hydrame uh, Righteous Blade. It's a 3 mana 3-3 three, three, that whenever he blocks and destroys a creature, uh, he can restand. So really good. He can block two creatures effectively in most cases. Or three like 1-1s one, one, <laughs> if that ever happens. Uh, if he is dragged across at the end of the battle that this creature blocked, return the attacking creature to its owner's hand. So kind of cool. Uh, kind of just like bounces cards. And then finally to finish it off, I think if I had them these would be two Fafnirs, but I don't. Uh, just in case we'd ever need them for like different kinds of play. But instead it's a Stormfeather Screecher. Uh, it just can become uh, like 7-7 seven, seven Double Breaker. So it just like breaks two uh, opposing shields. So, good card overall, uh, techie, just in case I have to face decks where I need to finish the game sooner, it might come in handy. So overall, that's the uh, Play-Doh Ambush Control deck uh, that I brewed up, and hopefully you enjoyed this video, and stay tuned for the next one. Take care, and have a good one, YouTube.